You know you're a mom when? How do you know that you're a mom? You know you're a mom when you feel your feet stick to the kitchen floor and you don't care anymore. You know you're a mom when you can't find your cordless phone and you ask a friend to call you and you run around the house madly following the sound until you finally locate it downstairs in the laundry basket. You know you're a mom when you spend an entire week wearing sweatpants. You know you're a mom when your idea of a good day is making it through without a child leaking bodily fluids all over you. You know you're a mom when popsicles become a food staple. You know you're a mom, and this one just grossed me out. I don't know how mothers do it. You know you're a mom when your baby's pacifier falls on the floor and you give it back to her after you suck the dirt off of it because you're too busy to wash it off. You know, but God bless... <laughs> it's mad. Well, that's one of mine. That's my next one. You know you're a mom when spit is your number one cleaning agent. You know you're a mom when you automatically double knot everything that you tie. You know you're a mom when you find yourself humming the Barney song as you do the dishes. I love you, you love me. You know you're a mom when you hear a baby cry in the grocery store and you start to gently sway back and forth, back and forth. However, all your children are at home. <laughs> Ever do that? That's a mom thing. It's a dad thing too, actually, in my house. You know you're a mom when you actually start to like the smell of strained carrots and mixed with applesauce. You know you're a mom when you get into crafts and contemplate writing a book called 101 Fun Crafts, 101 Fun Crafts to do with dryer lint and eggshells. And finally, you know you're a mom if you are out for a nice romantic meal with your partner, enjoying some real adult conversation, and you suddenly realize that you've reached across the table and you started to cut up their steak for them. <laughs> Thought it would be real fun. You know, this is an amazing world we live in, yes? We as human beings are an incredibly complex system of humanity, yes? And that's a wonderful blessing. And sometimes it's a little bit uh, of a challenge, yes? We are a collection of thoughts and beliefs and opinions and emotions and experiences. No two of us are exactly the same. Our job as Unity students in the blessing is to find the divine idea in the middle of that happening, that exchange of energy. But it's also our job as energy students in the midst of ideas and perspectives and experiences coming together and they clash a little bit. That's also our job to dig beneath the surface to find the love beneath the snow. To find the good that others have missed. To live as Cecilia and Bonnie and to find the presence of God when everybody else has missed it. That's the work that we do here. And sometimes it's not so easy, right? We're walking this earthly journey and sometimes it gets really challenging. Have you noticed that? Underneath the opinions, the perspectives, the judgments is something holy, is something good, and our job is to find it. One of the most intimate and possibly one of the most complex of all human experiences and relationships is the relationship of mother or of mothering. Mothering is an incredibly beautiful part of this earthly adventure. And because human beings are doing the task, well, it can be complex at every single level. And so your relationship with mom is welcome here in its complexity. Whether it be tears, whether it be laughter, whether it be frustration, whether it be separation, it's all welcome here and we honor all the aspects of this earthly journey around the divine idea of mothering. You see, none of us is having the same experience of mom or none of us is having the same experience of children. And that's a blessing. And it can be a difficult, difficult situation. We are like a great patchwork quilt. As I prepared the, the words today, I remembered the beautiful patchwork quilt that my grandmother had made me to go take nap time in kindergarten. I could still smell the fabric that she used. I can still feel the softness of that very eclectic quilt that she had. It made me think about our humanity. We are an eclectic potpourri of expressions and people. And our job is to find our way home and to walk each other home together by seeing the good when nobody can see it. Life and mothering can only be about context. People do that. If you notice the people, it's just all about the circumstances. This is the way she showed up. This is the way she did things. And this is the, the expression that I have in regards to my mother. Only colored by the circumstances and not by anything deeper. Looking at the snow and not digging beneath the surface to the rose. 
Our job is to find the good and the perfection that's underneath the emotions, the behaviors, the experiences, and the judgments. Our job as Unity students is absolutely to know that life is consciousness more than it is context. Let's say this together. Life is more about consciousness than context. You can take the unity path in one sentence and put it right there. What you're holding between your ears, what you're allowing access to the laboratory of your very being, your thinking, and your feeling is creating the life experience that you have. So the idea that you're holding about mom or dad or about kids is absolutely creating the reality that you are living. That's how powerful we are, yes? We are that powerful. We are the mothers of our reality. And that's the focus of the talk today. I am the mother of my reality. Say that with me. I am the mother of our reality. Life is much more about consciousness than context. Regardless of the tone of the context or the experience that you had of mother or mama or mothering, the consciousness that you bring to that relationship is determining the kind of life that you're living today. How you do one thing is how you do everything. We've all heard it, right? How I do one thing is how I do everything. Say that with me. How I do one thing is how I do everything. Your current view of mom is determining your life experience. Breathe that in. Everybody do me a favor. Notice how you're sitting right now. I want you to shift. I want you to shift in your chair. Shift your posture. Shift the way that you're sitting. Shift from one cheek to the other cheek. You know, Jesus told us to turn the other cheek. I don't think he was talking about <laughs> those cheeks. But what he was teaching us is that if you don't like what life is showing you, turn the other cheek, look a different way. He wasn't saying hit me on this side too. He was saying shift your consciousness. And it was easy to shift your body, right? Pretty simple to move your arms a little bit. I'm asking you on this Mother's Day to shift your thinking, to shift your consciousness a little bit. Now, Easy to shift your body, not so easy to shift something that maybe you've rehearsed for the last 50 years or 20 years or even 10 minutes. But that's what I'm asking you to do on this Mother's Day is to get in touch with the laboratory between your ears and shift your perspective in such a way that your life is a little bit better when you leave this place here today. It's just simply done with your body. And it's sometimes for some people, it's the biggest fight on the planet to do it with your mind. But it is a fight worth having. I'm asking you to be a warrior and a soldier with changing your consciousness and know that you're not just changing the consciousness of your own individual expression, but you're doing it for the world. I'll get into that in a moment, but I'm asking you to turn the other cheek. Something that you've looked at that feels terrible, wrong, dark, shift over here and find something. Channel Bonnie Martin, channel Cecilia Smith, and find a higher way. Every day, every day, each and every one of us is handed a set of circumstances, yes? Every morning you get up and your feet hit the ground and you've got a set of cards that are yours to play for the day. Sometimes they are good, sometimes they're not so good, right? Ours is to every day make a decision, every morning before our feet hit the floor, to make a decision, to make a choice, to accept the reality of yesterday or to shift it to shift like you did your body in the chair a minute ago, to give power away to the world and what it's doing, or to claim your power back as a creator and manifester of life. You were created in the image and after the likeness of God. We hear that in scripture. What does that mean? It means you were created in the image of creativity. You were designed, God doing business at the point of view is designed to create. And you're either doing it consciously or you're doing it unconsciously. And unconsciously is a very dangerous thing to do, so let's stay awake, let's stay present. That's what grace is. Grace, it's the only thing we teach about grace, is it's choice. Your ability to choose your experience. Your ability to choose how you're gonna to react to your experience, to your mom, to your father, to your children, to yourself, to anything in life. My mother used to tell me when I would complain, she would say, you know, somebody's got it a lot worse than you do. I'm not sure if she intended that to be positive. <laughs> but I used it as a positive affirmation. I took it to mean, as counsel to me, to stop complaining about what isn't working and start giving your attention to what is working. 
by shifting my experience, shifting my, my cheek, shifting my perspective, and shifting my focus. Stop complaining about the wrong things and start looking for the good things and water that garden and tend that garden. That's what new thought is in a nutshell. You are called to be the mother of a different reality. If you don't like the relationship you're having, mother a different reality. People will show up the way you see them eventually or they will fade away from your experience. But yours is to hold the high watch, to live in the upper room of consciousness and to see good and love when nobody else can see it. We are the creators of our lives and you have been handed the kingdom of heaven, which is the ability to, to imagine, to declare, to decree, and to visualize exactly what you want. Now, do you know what you want? Many of us are aimlessly walking through the planet not knowing what we want. And I reminded, was reminded this week of an old Joe Jackson song that my drummer friend John used to sing all the time. You can't get what you want till you know what you want. Sing that with me. You can't get what you want till you know what you want. And now for the subconscious mind. You can't get what you want till you know what you want. So if you don't have an answer, when somebody asks you, what do you want out of life? Where are you going? I'm saying get in touch with it on this Mother's Day. Become a mother of a new paradigm. Become the mother of a new experience and get in touch as to what your steps are leading you towards. What your thoughts are leading you towards. What your feelings and your actions are leading you towards. We are not pieces of driftwood. And for too long we have lived as pieces of driftwood, subject to the waves of life, beating, getting beat against the rocks as if we have no control under the waves of context, under the waves of circumstance. Life is about consciousness, not context. We have put the cart before the horse. We are the cause, but we're living in the effects. Get your focus off the effects, turn the other cheek, and get to the reality that you are the cause. God is doing business at the point of view to make the world a better place. Yes, you are the mothers of a greater reality. You are the masters, the victors, the creators, and the mothers of our world. Take your hand and place it upon your heart. And I want you to repeat after me. I am the master. I am the victor. I am the creator. And I am the mother of the world that I live in. That can just seem like I just repeated words. Oh, no, no, that's the most important statement you could make. I am the mother of my own reality. I'm taking my power back. I don't give it to the people who don't show up the way I think they should. I don't give it to the mother who didn't show up the way I think she should, or the father, or anybody. Because a power resides within my heart, within my mind, within my life. Everything in this world was created twice. It says it in the book of Genesis. There's two creation stories because one is happening here first. I poked myself in the eye. One is happening here first. It's actually happening here too. And it's happening here too. And it's happening here too. You must create it first in mind or it's never going to manifest in the, in the realm of, of form. Everything must be created twice. So what are you thinking today? What are you thinking right now on this Mother's Day? Whether you're here or in, online, what are you giving your power away to? Recently, I discovered a document. I created a document many, many years ago, and I was asked by my men's group at the time to write down what would be an ideal church for you to be in. What would be the ideal community? This was long before I was ever at Unity North. And I put a long list, a very long paragraph of all the things that I thought would be wonderful and beautiful to have in my spiritual community. And I meditated every day over that. I prayed over that every day, and I planted seeds of consciousness, seeds of possibility. Well, when we made the move from California to Georgia, everything got packed into a box, got packed at the bottom of a box, and it got lost. I didn't think about it until recently it showed up again. And I picked up this document, and it blew my mind. It is an amazing template for what we have mothered and created together as this church, Unity North Atlanta Church. Line after line after line after line, it was like, I'm living it. It showed up. It manifested in my world. Is it possible that we can manifest something in God's timing, and we can even fall asleep like the prodigal son, and remember who we are, and suddenly the document shows up, and you get to be a little bit more grateful for the good that you have in front of you. So I like to say that I prayed all of you into existence. 
I birthed you. I am your mama. <laughs> but what's beautiful about that is you are my mother. So if you don't like what you see, you're the mother. But the reality is we have birthed a reality here in this community that is holy, that is beautiful, that is sacred, and sometimes we forget. Sometimes we fall asleep. Turn to your left and your right and say, you are the mother of my reality and I'm the mother of your reality. The parallels to what we are experiencing here today to the document that I prayed about years and years and years ago are uncanny. So if you don't like what the world is showing you, change your thinking. If you don't like what your church is showing, then change your thinking. Put it down on a document and pray about it. Meditate about it. But be the shift and the change that you want to see. The more we nurture, develop, and passionately practice our creative abilities, the sooner our pictures are brought into manifestation. Meister Eckhart is one of my heroes, 14th century mystic. And he says, this is our job. When I say that you're the mother of my reality, we are the mothers of our reality. It is absolutely true. He said this, He said, we are all called to be the mothers of God because God is needing to be born every moment. What we are experiencing here is God formed through the birthing canal of our thoughts, of our actions, and our feelings. Do we like what the baby's showing us? Great, nurture it, tend to it. If we don't like what it's showing us, we put some discipline into place and we get there and we pray and we meditate over that which our heart is desiring in a spiritual community, at work, in my family, or in my life. Yes, what you focus on grows, plain and simple. We've heard this a hundred times, but go ahead and say it with me. Energy flows where attention goes. You don't like it, turn the cheek. Look a different direction. Mother a different reality. Be present to what God is wanting to do through you and as you. And the more we nurture that, the greater the manifestation is going to be as collective, a co-collective, co-creative expression that is mother, is community. You ever notice that angry people find reasons to be angry? No matter what you do, no matter what you say, angry people are going to find something to be angry about. But here's the other side. Bonnie Martin, joyful people find a reason to be joyful. Bonnie worked in the front office uh, at Unity North. God, I was so grateful there because I would come in as an angry person some days, and I'd find reasons to be angry, and she would deflect, and she'd mother a new reality for me, and she helped me find a reason to be joyful. And therefore, the day lined up differently. People showed up differently in me in life because she taught me and ministered to me as a mother. The joyful people also find reasons to be joyful. Victims. Ever notice this? That victims who are living in a victim energy are perpetually victimized. They're perpetually recreating and manifesting reasons to be upset because somebody has victimized them. That's spiritual law. It's happening. The machine is working. As you think, so shall it be. But God is wanting to be born through us as the mothers of God. So joyful, hopeful, visionary people will always find reasons to be joyful, hopeful, loving, compassionate, and good. Which do you like? You don't like, according to Dr. Phil, how's it working for you? Or are you working the system at all? Are you working the system at all? Or are you a piece of driftwood banging against the waves and the rocks? You get to choose. That's grace. You get to choose on this Mother's Day. And I'm challenging you to shift a little bit this Mother's Day and mark this day. May 12th, 2024 is the day that you shifted from being angry, being upset, being resentful, and being joyful, and being compassionate, and being more loving. And I'd love to say you it's a one, one decision moment that your life's going to be fine tomorrow. No, it's a moment to moment, day to day, breath to breath, heartbeat to heartbeat, the choice and decision. I will mother a different reality before my feet even hit the floor. So many people approach life with this resignation that is if we have no say. Life happens to us. I'm looking at Sharon Sigler out there. She got a couple diagnoses and she, you know, they gave her some bad news and she says, nope, I'm the mother of my reality. And she overcame what was pretty, pretty traumatic. I'm proud of you. 
you have shown and demonstrated that you're not controlled by that. Now, Cecilia Smith, she passed with cancer. But what Cecilia Smith demonstrated, see, it's not about the external reality because simple, some people die of cancer. The woman died with a smile on her face. She was connected to something more powerful, more beautiful, more holy, and more sacred than the condition, than the context. Life is consciousness, not context. I had two very close friends that passed from cancer within two weeks of each other, many years ago. One of them was a part of that great list. He helped birth you all people into reality. One of them died in hell. The other died in heaven. They had the same cancer, the same upset. One of them died angry. Why did this happen to me? This isn't fair. The other was literally, with being intubated five minutes before he passed, writing fart jokes <laughs> on a whiteboard, and we were all laughing. And he had a choir of angels around him singing, God is my all in all. God is my all in all. You get to choose how that next breath is used. And that breath may not be here tomorrow, but you get to choose to live and to die and to ascend and to continue to live in heaven. But you're the only one that can make that decision. Let me tell you, I've done both. I've chosen both. Choosing heaven is way easier and way more beautiful. If we don't consciously create, we are creating by default and that's a dangerous place. If we don't consciously mother new paradigms into this earthly existence, we are unconsciously perpetuating that which is already here. By spiritual law, once we recognize, once you and I recognize and implement our God-given ability as mothers and fathers of God, of life, of reality, then we can create anything in our lives, not only objects but outcomes. So many people in New Thought are all about the objects. That's an effect. That's context. Go deeper with the reality. You can, you can create circumstances. Beyond objects, you can create circumstances. But I'm saying don't camp out there because you can go deeper. You can create and manifest an inner reality that is so transformative, that is so powerful that you rise above the context. And when you rise above the context, by consciousness, the context changes. Be the one that changes the relationship if you didn't have a good one with your mom. And she doesn't have to still be here. Connect at a spiritual place and redesign, reform, and dance into a different expression of love with your mom or your kids or whoever is in your life that's driving you nuts. Be the change that you want to see in that relationship. How many people have ever watched the show Whose Line Is It Anyway? I love that show. Some of the most gifted people on the planet. It's a great improv show. It's the best improv I've ever seen. What they're doing in the show is making it up. Everything is made up. And I thought, that's exactly what we're doing. Life is about making it up. I can espouse a hundred different theological opinions and ideas, and I can read scripture, and it's all wonderful, but it's pointing you in the direction that you're making it up. The reality that you're living, you're making it up. And what happens in that show is somebody says a line to you and you respond based on what they've said. Totally improvised, no rehearsed lines, and you can redirect with the language that you use. Scenes are completely taken off rail or put onto a different track based on how somebody responds from a level of improv. Well, and what happens is the other actor, if they cannot handle what you've just thrown at them to redirect the, uh, the environment, they tap out. They laugh, they tap out, and somebody else comes in. And I thought, you know what? My life has been a series of learning how to be me, how to create my life, how to manifest my life, and there are a lot of people that tapped out. Thank God. Because it made room for somebody else to come in who can play at the higher vibration, who can play at the higher dimension. It brought to me people like Bonnie Martin and Cecilia Smith into my environment who actually allowed me to improvise with them to create a better reality in this church, to create a better reality between my ears, to create a better reality on earth and certainly in my life. 
Those that cannot shift will tap out and somebody else will come in. This is a great metaphor for this Mother's Day talk. As you own the stage of your experience, you own it, you direct it, you, you, you are living it, loving it, massaging it, moving it, shifting it, whether it be these cheeks or these cheeks, that what you are doing is creating a different reality and those that cannot handle it will tap out. And it can be fun. It, enjoy the ride. Can we enjoy the ride? Yes, spiritual law is serious stuff, but if we're not enjoying it, then we're not going to be creating joy. Enjoy and laugh at yourself when you fall down and you make a mistake. Enjoy that, man, I lost it with my mother yet again. Ugh. Tomorrow, I'll do it better. Just laugh at yourself as you own the stage of your experience. That which you are calling to you will happen. But you're not just doing it for yourself. You know, I often have joked here, we're here today to save the world. That's why we come together. There's a collective consciousness, and we're saving the world. How many of you have been on Facebook this week? In first service, they're like, hell no, not going anywhere near Facebook. <laughs> a brand new word that's probably existed forever, this was not in my field, has been all over Facebook. It's meliorism. M-E-L-I-O-R-I-S-M. It's become my new religion. Meliorism, which basically is a belief system that I can affect the whole of the planet. That I have the ability and the power through whatever energies that are showing up at me and God's showing up at the point of all of us, we are affecting the earth as we know it. People we'll never meet are being affected energetically by what we are bringing to the planet. The thought that you just held is either adding to war or adding to peace. The thought that you're having is not just war and peace in your own heart and your own mind, it's at the people around you. It's the people in Ukraine. It's the people all over the country that are at war right now. It's the political environment that we're involved in right now. You don't like what the world's showing you. I don't think anybody on any side of this equation likes what the world's showing us. Then change your stinking thinking and be a part of affecting things that life wants to move in a positive direction. And that's not Pollyanna. I'm so tired of us when we have a good thought. Oh, well, you new thought people are rainbowing it. No, I'm not. I'm just using spiritual law. I am using the very laws placed in my hand, the kingdom of heaven placed into my hands, my mind, and my heart to affect change. My complaints are not going to help the political situation in our country. You can speak them, but make sure 51% of the time you're finding something good. 51% of the time you're finding something to, to celebrate, to water, to tend, to be compassionate about, to be loving about. Somebody has always got it worse off than you, but I look at our country with our problems, I don't know where it is, we've got it pretty darn good. Yeah, we are totally imperfect. And I look at this church, and I look at my list that I created for this church, yeah, there's a lot of perfect things here, and there's a lot of imperfect things here also. I'm so grateful for a staff and a board that does appreciative inquiry. Let's talk about the things that aren't working, yes, but let's give the bulk of our time to what is working here, to what is holy, to what is sacred, where God is showing up and how we are giving birth to God through the work that we do here. I'm asking us to be birthers of God in the community, in the country, in the state, in the world, and on the earth, and to be a part of the great movement of meliorism to know that the thought you just held is affecting people you'll never meet in a positive, beautiful way. As I, a band can come uh, back up as we prepare for meditation. Anybody watch the movie? I don't think it was an accident. This movie's been around for a while, but I was on the way back from California on an airplane in a very uh, non-conducive uh, mindset. The person next to me was snoring so loudly. The person in front of me ever have this? I wanted to watch a movie. And they took their seat, sat down, and went, poof. So I'm watching a movie about this close to me with somebody snoring. So I really had to focus on the meaning of this movie. How many of you have seen the movie? Everything, everywhere, all at once. It is a bizarre drug trip. It, you know, and everybody warned me that it's weird, it's bizarre, it's hard to follow. Yes, it was all those things. But I realized that I had to focus because this was going on. This was going on. Life was coming in, and I felt boxed in. I had to get really attentive. And I found that this movie, yes, was weird, bizarre, and hard to follow. But I found it incredibly empowering. 
And I found a mindset and a lesson that I absolutely needed to hear. The central character of the movie is a mother, divine appointment, no accidents, a mother who decided she was not going to go status quo. She was going to change the reality, move from, from ordinary to extraordinary. She's in a place, a wild ride, fighting with her daughter. That's a familiar Mother's Day story, isn't it? Fighting with her daughter. Fighting with her husband. Yep, even more familiar on Mother's Day. Fighting with her father, wrestling with herself, and a thousand different realities, negative and positive, trying to make her stop moving forward with the power that she was given. She didn't succumb to it. And I thought, this is what I need to learn right here, right now. I will not succumb to the negative energies within me or the ones outside of me, but that I am more. I am more, by God-given reality, I am more than any of these experiences. A little music would be great. She battled all these forces and refused to succumb, so she moved from the ordinary life that was suffering to the extraordinary life that was joy, that was bliss, that was love. And that's the journey that we're all on. She created different realities and was truly living in meliorism because the movie clearly indicates that we are one. And that as I change my stinking thinking to something more beautiful, I change it for you too. And the possibility is surrounding all creation because it's all happening right here, right now, in you, in me, but there's only one of us here. There's only one of us here. There's only one of us in the government. There's only one of us on the earth. There's only one of us in control of what was happening with our earth. So we have a direct access by what we are holding here to affect the planet. That's how powerful you are and we are. And so my challenge as we move into meditation, these are my, my counsels for this Mother's Day. This is what I'm asking each of you to do. I invite you to read this with me. Take ownership of your life and choices. Embrace your power to shape experiences. Cultivate a growth mindset. Practice self-awareness. Set intentions. I want you to create that document. And don't put it in a file and bury it. Create the document and live it. Breathe it. Together, nurture your creativity and imagination. Challenge your assumptions and biases. Welcome new possibilities and opportunities. Develop a greater sense of purpose and direction. And mother more meaningful connections. Mother more meaningful relationships than the one you currently have. Be the change you want to, want to see. Once again, change your body. Flip the cheeks. Every moment you can change the position that your body's in, the position that your mind is in, the position that your heart is in, and your soul. Maybe it's a shift about mother, about father, about yourself, or about some dark energy that's trying to make you succumb to an external reality of effects. I'm saying be the cause. 